guys and welcome to another episode of Thinker Thema. I'm Amy, I either think are all about mechanics and this is my wonderful fiance Maggie, the Thema, who's all about the story, all about that immersive experience that the designer is trying to create. Yes. And today we're looking at a very new game that was released um, over Essen Spiel and that is Praga Kaput Regni, which apparently Maggie was telling me stands for capital of capital the kingdom, kingdom. Yes. and Praga of course is the wonderful city of Prague in the Czech Republic mm -hmm. and this game is by Vladimir Suchi who is the designer of a game that we haven't played Pulsar 2849 mm -hmm. but one that we do own um, underwater cities mm -hmm. and uh, he is very well respected mm -hmm. as a designer and a lot of people were anticipating this game so we were really excited to get it to the table actually when I opened the box, I was so excited. Like I immediately opened everything, punched everything, set it up. And I, I said, this could be my game of 2020. Mm. Mm. It was a big call, big hype. <laughs> so what's the theme in Praga? You're essentially these wealthy citizens trying to please the king, Charles IV, who is very interested in creating this amazing city and quite literally building up the city. So you're going to be helping coordinate some of these building projects, which might include things around the town, might include helping with the bridge, um, and also things like the hunger wall and the cathedral. So whoever is uh, the one that is best at pleasing the king and achieving the best combination, most efficient combination of projects shall be victorious. Now one thing I think that helps really bring the game to life is the board. Mm. How amazing is the board? There is an action selection wheel on the top right hand corner. There are these two one, uh, two like 3D building elements. One is the cathedral that you're helping to build and the other is the hunger wall uh, which you're also helping to build and then of course the iconic mm -hmm. Charles Bridge. So it's called Charles Bridge, isn't it? Mm, I think it's so. his namesake. Mm -hmm. um, and so there's also the, the town. So there's the mm -hmm. old town and the new town. So if you've ever been to Prague, this is a fairly representative uh, collection of all of the tourist highlights. Mm. Um, and so we were really excited to get stuck into this. So how does it play? Actually, the game is not that difficult. It looks fairly complex and sure there are a lot of different paths that you can take, but really you are relying on this little hex that you have, this collection of hexes that are the six different actions that you can take in the game. And the trick to this is you can activate any of those six actions, but only if you have a matching action tile from this action selection wheel in the top right hand corner of the board. And the way that this works is that some of the tiles are going to cost you money. Other tiles, if they can make all them all the way around the wheel without someone selecting them, they're going to give you bonus victory points. And the ones in the middle are just neutral. So I could take this one for free. And then my options to me are to take a bridge building or the king's road building action or an upgrade action. So all of these little tiles represent two different things that you can do from the six different things available to you on your board. And when you take these, you also get a bonus action associated with it on the wheel. Once you've taken your turn, resolve the action, you put your, um, the whole thing turns one, and then you put your marker in the top. And so the wheel keeps turning and the available actions to the next player are changing based on what you've done. So it's a little bit different because instead of having a worker placement system where you're fighting over actions, it's more like looking at what's available to you and sometimes the action that you want to take is not available yeah. to you anymore because it's been um, pushed up to the top of the wheel where it costs more money, you don't have more money. Mm -hmm. So the, the things that you can get done in this game, um, there's many of them. I won't cover them off in too much detail. Um, there's definitely how to play videos out there. Um, but what I want to talk about is the multitudes of things that you can get done and, and just how you get those done. And of course, being a dry euro um, and a point seller, you need resources in order to get things done. What I really love is this little player board where you are marking off your gold with these little dials rather than collecting them. And yeah, oh, if you watch our channel, you know that I'm not very good with fiddly resources. I love fiddly resources. <laughs> and so I actually just love that it's just a, di a counting dial for both your stone and your gold in the game. 
Um, and then you've got uh, two tracks down the bottom that uh, can tell you how much stone you can generate at one time and um, how much gold you can generate. So you're increasing your ability to generate more resources. And then on the right hand side, you have two um, kind of race tracks that at the end of the game are going to be multiplied times each other to get you a certain number of victory points. And so you're trying to increase your standing on those two tracks. Um, but then you're also trying to get things done to please King Charles on the board. And those options available to you are to um, take one of these three hexes on the board, these three different sets here. And the first set are buildings and the buildings get played into this area of the board down the bottom that has the old city and the new city. And when you play that, that's a mini um, area control game. So you're getting immediate points, but then at the end of the game, there are also points um, depending on uh, what you own in that space. The other is um, to build a wall and the wall actually gets constructed around your uh, action board. And so what's interesting about that is uh, there's a bit of tile placement in this game. Actually, all of this is tile placement. Um, and then the third thing you can do is you can actually upgrade your actions, which go on top of your previous actions that give you a certain bonus every time you complete that action throughout the rest of the game. Now, the next thing you can get done is that you can, depending on the tiles that you're laying, it might trigger an ability for you to do something in this um, cathedral and the hunger wall. And the way this works is that you're trying to move um, across the rows in order to improve the value of some of the tokens in the game. And you're also trying to move up the column because if you can get to the top of the the um, hunger wall, hunger wall, for example, you start with no victory points on the hunger wall. If you can get to the top, it's worth 22 victory points at the end of the game. The other option to you is to help being, build the king's road, which is one of my favorite actions because you get to move along this road here um, and you've got a worker that goes from space to space. And when you get to the end of this road, you get to contribute to the Charles Bridge. You get to um, place bonus tiles down onto the bridge and get both the bonus on that tile and the ones underneath it. If you can get to the last step in the bridge, you're activating some end game scoring conditions. So there's a lot to think about here. I'm not going to go too much more into detail on this, but basically you are on your turn looking to see what actions are available to you that you can afford looking to see how many resources you have and, and which tiles you can buy and then really playing out any bonuses associated with the combination of things that you're buying mm -hmm. and where you're placing them. Let's talk about theme integration. So I enjoy the theme. I absolutely love the artwork. So the actual design and the components are really high quality. Um, everything about it, even like your player board, the way that the, the wheels move, like everything just feels really like nice, um, robust and like you can have a fair bit like this, the, the main wheel has a mechanism where you, whereby when you do your entire um, round, the this cube gets locked in place it falls down a little hole it falls down a little hole and it gets locked in place and that signals for you to move the round um, tracker forward um, and that is like mechanically like that's quite fun beautiful one other thing with with the artwork is it is beautiful but it reminded me a bit a bit of like where's wally or where's waldo depending on where in the world um you are because it is quite like it can feel quite busy and so even though it's beautiful to look at it was actually a little bit of a barrier initially for us to wrap our head around it um going what's what's going on and so you almost kind of have to look through it um and then once you're familiar with the game it's just it's nice with the the ambience and atmosphere that you get with these 3d components it's i love that it is it is um you do feel like if you're building the bridge like you are putting laying down those tiles feels like and, such an achievement yeah exactly and you're <gasps> can like, i yeah. talk about the bridge for a second <laughs> yeah so i mentioned two of the <laughs> yeah. resources but another resource is eggs mm -hmm. and you know, when you first play this game, you're like, what? why, why are, are we collecting eggs? eggs and why do we why care about eggs? That eggs seems way things. off theme. Mm. But actually, you use eggs to move along the wall um, in order to get to, sorry, the King's Road in order to get to building the bridge. And the reason why you need eggs to build the bridge is because apparently 
in the mortar that holds the bridge together, they mixed in egg yolks. And that is, some people believe that's why it's still standing egg today. Yolks. It's just eggs. No, it's egg yolk. Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought it'd be something in the shell. No, the, it's the actual egg yolk. And so they felt that would help bind the bridge together <laughs> and it's still standing. So who knows? It works for baking. So surely it'll work exactly. for bridges. I exactly. Guess. Anyway, so that is such a fun, like just shows yeah. that Vl- Vladimir Suchi has like yeah. a real sense of humor. There are some beautiful nods to the theme. So there's there's definitely like in terms of how you're building the pl- the the buildings around the plaza, you're building the bridge, um, the way that kind of the wheel turns around, um, the when you're building the wall. So these um, gray tiles, they actually are a wall that gets built around your uh, kind of main hex tile. Mm-hmm. It's not really a hex, but um, so, so, and then even on your player board, as you're advancing things, as I said, like those, those little wheel trackers are, you know, quite fun. Having said that, you know, you said that you don't like the fiddly components. I actually kind of do miss the fiddly components. I can like, see that. When, when I, when I'm kind of gaining stone or when I'm gaining gold, it's like, it's not as satisfying to move a dial as it is to like physically actually like tactile get those components that you can go oh i can see them piling up so that is something that i miss um that's why you're the themer because i'm just like (laughs) it doesn't matter it's just a number yeah (laughs) yeah i do have a couple of questions in terms of um yeah from that integration point like there's a lot of beautiful nods to the history and the town and and all of that all the town the city but there are things that don't necessarily make a lot of thematic uh, or immersive sense, like the little puzzles that you're doing to get these little um, the blue or red tokens that then you have those multipliers, whether you know, you're building, uh, helping uh, with a hunger wall or helping with a cathedral. That makes no thematic sense. It's just kind of like, don't look into it too much. If you can think of the thematic sense, please let me know in the comments because I am genuinely open to learning what it could possibly be. From an experience of play, this game really puzzles me because I love so many components of it and I should in theory love the game, but for some reason what I find myself is when I finish a game I always feel a little bit like, eh, like I'm always a little bit kind of like dissatisfied or a little bit like like something was missing and I can't quite, and we've played it a lot. We have now. played it a lot. And I can't and quite Maggie, put my- And you played it solo. I've played it solo as well. Mm-hmm. So, because part of it was like, I have not once won this game. And I thought maybe I'm just being a sore loser and I'm not enjoying it because like Amy's destroying me every single time. So maybe if I play it solo, like there'll be less of, you know, Amy doing, you know, the beating of me. Um, less Amy. Game. Less Fine. Amy, maybe it'll be better. And it was actually, I, I didn't play it with the AI. I played it with a version where you're just essentially removing one tile every turn. Um, and it was a similar experience where by the end of it, I'm like, I still can't put my finger on why is it that I'm not enjoying the experience. I usually like the sense of creating something and you are sort of, you know, working to build um, your buildings around the plazas. You are kind of trying to build your, your, um, the, the wall around your, your structure or your, but it, it almost kind of feels like I'm a little bit divided in a lot of ways. I've tried some games where I've just focused on one area or the other. It seems like the bridge is overpowered where it's like, if you don't really go for the bridge, is you, your chances are going to be fairly um, I don't compromised. That. I don't know. That's my that's my yeah. um, experience. Yeah. So it's it's a game that I genuinely I want to like it more, and I don't dislike it. Like when mm. I'm playing it, I'm like I'll play it. It's not like an unpleasant experience. There are games where I actually like physically, I'm groaning the whole time <laughs> um, that I'm playing. This is not that like I actually will play it but there's just a little bit something that doesn't come together for me at the end and I don't know yeah I don't know why and that like of course because I view everything from the mechanics I've been doing a lot of thinking about like obviously the theme doesn't completely come together but there is a theme here so oh, you sure. know you can yeah. appreciate that but um I I have been thinking about the mechanics and, and what is right for Maggie and I versus um things that don't quite land as well and mm. I think the reason why we're kind of a little soft on this game is because it's not very tight. Um, So, and other people will love this, that there's not a lot of competition in terms of getting to do what you want to do and being really frustrated with other players. Mm. So when you're playing a worker placement game, there's a lot of that, oh, you took that action and now I can't take it. Um, Whereas here, even though the wheel has costs, it's more often than not you're able to do something um, and something that will benefit you. And um, it's about 
um, this game is really about on each turn optimizing your move mm. rather than planning out your strategy mm. for the next five turns because these um, hexes are continuously being replaced. Mm. And that means that you don't often know, and I imagine this gets even worse at a um, larger play account because we've only played this at two, mm-hmm. um, when it, you know, when someone takes a tile and it's replaced, you don't really know what's going to be available yeah. to you in this market of tiles until it's your turn. Likewise, it's a bit hard to predict which action people are going to be taking mm. um, and therefore what will be available to you on your turn. And so... That leads to a very tactical game where you're trying to evaluate all the options to you once it gets to your turn and then taking the most optimal and also the one that's going to have the best combination of bonuses to kind of maximize your turn as best as possible because in this game you only get 16 turns and that's what makes this game quite difficult is that there is not enough time to do Mm. um, a bit of everything in this game. You really have to pick a lane, Mm. pick a strategy and go for it, but then be willing to um, go where the bonuses take you and kind of maximize out the bonuses you're getting along the way. So part of it is the lack of tension in this game. Um, But the other part of it, I think, is that there's a lot of luck involved in terms of what's coming out and with those tiles. So Mm. if you're a person who prefers, you know, complete information and not too many things changing or the game state not changing too much between turns, um, you know, you, you might have the same issues with us. However, if you like the fact that, you know, you can just always get something done in this game. There's a lot of people who love that about games, that they have a wide open play space. It's not too competitive. Like for me, I actually did really enjoy this game. It's, you know, I gave it a big hype at the beginning when I opened it. It was like, this is going to be the game. Uh, It's probably not the game of 2020 for me. Um, And and to give you a good tangible example, Tekenyu is um, another game that's a bit of a point salad. But for me, it has a lot more tension around the die selection um, on your turn. And I did feel like I could plan ahead a little bit more. This one, what I enjoy about it is you know, I I like to plan out my most efficient path and I do find that it's quite calm. Um, The problem that it does have is um, AP because analysis paralysis, because Mm. when it comes around to your turn, the game state has changed and Mm. like you need to think through then, okay, if I take this tile, where am I going to place it? Then what are the bonuses? Then can I have another bonus turn and, and kind of all of those pieces. So I I would hazard a guess that at four players, it would be like quite a long game because of Mm, that AP. But, you know, I enjoyed this much more than Maggie did, um, for sure. Um, And, you know, I think it's like, I prefer it actually over Underwater Cities. So Uh, I would, mm, ah, that's a big call. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I feel like you enjoyed Underwater Cities Yeah, I I enjoyed it more. I felt... But yeah, I had a, a better after, I kind of get a get a better after game feeling yeah. than I get with this. And I think like another reason why I love it probably more than Maggie um, is because of the clever mechanics, like the wheel and how how it kind of tracks the It has some fun rounds. gimmicks, like I don't think it's a gimmick gimmicks. though. I actually think a lot of thought has gone into that wheel. And I don't how disagree that all... there's a lot of thought into it, but... It doesn't actually have any kind of thematic <laughs> reason for it. Being like right. I said, mechanically, I think there are some really clever things mm. here. Um, and I know that there are a lot more synergies that we need to explore um, because when you take a single path focused on one thing, it opens up other synergies with parts of the board. And mm. if you're looking to explore those different things that you can get done, I think there's a lot of replayability in this game. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I think that's kind of yeah. everything. I'll Talk a little bit about the solo variant because in the so there's two versions of the solo. I don't know if there's there's even more. Um, the version that I played is you're essentially in between your turns. You're taking an AI turn, but that turn is just removing one tile and moving it back to the highest or the most expensive point. Um, so the experience of the playthrough is very similar, which then kind of talks a little bit to how multiplayer solitaire this can mm. possibly be and how much of it is really just what's available on the board at the time that you get to take your turn. I thought that I would enjoy it more without Amy. Um, And I did a little bit because it meant that like there's obviously no downtime. It's just like I get to play the whole time and I get and I actually can have very, very fast uh, games. I guess this is probably one of the ones that I've played the most solo just because I can kind of go, I'll try this now. I'll try this other strategy. I'll try that. But every single time when I finish the game, I'm like, 
eh, it's like I feel like I didn't quite accomplish um, what I wanted or or in the way and for a combination of reasons. I have never gone like apparently the, a good score would be like getting 140. I've never been able, I've cracked 100, but I've like it boggles my mind how you could get that high. There is another variation with a proper AI um, player, which you can also include in a two player game mm. to make it a three player win game. We haven't done that because we actually don't have a printer that's working uh, at the moment. You have to like print the cards, the AI cards. So we can't do that. Um, but uh, that looks quite interesting because it, it does. Um, it, it looks like it would make things a little bit trickier um, or yeah, more exciting um, along the way on the board. So will this game stay in our collection and why should you own it? Well, let me just say I'm going to fight hard to keep this in our <laughs> collection. Um, actually, one of the first things Maggie said to me after we'd played it quite a number of times is she thought that it would be best to move it on to someone who would enjoy it more. She doesn't enjoy this game and that's okay. <laughs> Not every game is for every person. For me... Mechanically, I can really appreciate what Vladimir is doing here. I don't think that any of the mechanisms are particularly new, but the way that they all come together and the physicality of the wheel and all of the buildings really intrigues me. And I really want to continue playing out the different um, strategies and the way that everything comes together and how that results in victory points at the end. Like Maggie said, people are getting higher scores than us, so we must be not having the There's most efficient, that I'm not doing for efficient sure. yeah. puzzles. So um, I'm excited to kind of keep trying things. Um, I think you would like this game if you like a more forgiving game where you always get to do something that's positive, contributing to your victory points, but you like that, you know, you might just have a better strategy than someone else and win out at the very end of the game rather than a tense, unforgiving kind of experience where people are getting in your way and there's more take that. Mm. There's very little almost none of that in this game. It's a bit more like a multiplayer solitaire. Maggie won't agree with me, but I get the same feeling as playing Scythe um, because, because different for me. very <laughs> different, different, very me. different for yeah. you. But I, for me, it's about like that. You're not really getting in the way of my strategy. I think what is different between those two games is here. There's a lot more um, luck involved with what's being mm -hmm. what's coming out and so if you don't like that again stay clear of this game if you do like that and you like just making your decisions on the fly mm -hmm. then this game would definitely be for you um but like i said i'll be fighting to keep it in our collection <laughs> um because i really appreciate what vladimir is doing in terms of design um but unfortunately it wasn't the game of 2020 that i wanted it to be but I think it's a lot of fun. I love the artwork aside from it being a bit busy with the tiles, but you know, and it does recreate Prague beautifully. Yeah, yeah, it does. It actually does feel like a map. Like remember those yeah. tourist maps that you get that kind of have, yeah. Yeah. So that's our review of our Praga Kaput Regni. Um, if you liked this video, please uh, hit like, Join us in the comments. We're always in the comments discussing um, different things. Like if you've played this, tell us what you think. Are you looking forward to getting this on the table? What do you think of our review? All of the above. Um, hit tell me strategy. I, I, I'm keen <laughs> yeah. to figure out if maybe, if I can find a way to head to that 140, maybe I'll enjoy the game more. I don't I don't know why. Give yeah. Maggie some strategy notes. Give me um, some thematic <laughs> threads that I can hang on to. <laughs> and um, subscribe to our channel. Um, you know, we're still small but growing um but we love having you all here and we'll be back with more videos soon so bye for now okay.